Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm delighted to be joined by none other than Matt Holland. 49 international appearances, or caps rather, and 5 goals, as well as a pretty illustrious career. Didn't start off with the best of, uh, I suppose, uh, intentions, did it? What, as in yeah. my career generally? or Yeah, just in terms of your club career. Um, you let go was, by Arsenal, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was yeah a testing period to be honest. I mean, I was a um, I actually started at Southampton as a kid in their academy. Um, oh, went to Arsenal, uh, and when I was about thirteen, fourteen, they said, um, well, they released me at I think just coming up to fourteen. Um, the excuse was that I was too small. It's just a kind way of saying you're not good enough to be yeah. honest. Um, so I spent a year without a club. It's, it's it's funny how that like I was just saying to you off air there like David Beckham was told the same and he went on to captain I think, England and, and, and played for some of the best. I think you'll players. find that a lot of players have had a rejection at some time in their career. You know, maybe not the, the very very best, but most players have been told you're not quite good enough or you you're not going to be in my plans. Um, you know, a lot of the time it's just one person's opinion really. Yeah. You know that that counts. So. Um, you know, nine people might like you, but one person doesn't think you're quite good enough, and it's that person that has the say that that's the reason why. And um, but most people will have had a rejection at some time. Um, so you I, you took a year out was of playing at all? No, 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 no. Crikey, I, I played football was my love from from sort of when I could walk. Really, I kicked yeah. a ball and you know went and watched my dad play on on the touchline. So football was always my life. Um, so no, no, I didn't stop at all. And then I went to um, West Ham. So uh, West Ham, I was just playing some Sunday football and uh, Frank Lampard Senior, so Frank Lampard's dad yeah. was on the touchline watching and, and he invited me to go to West Ham and train. Um, went there and trained a couple of times, played a couple of games, signed and then signed um, school boy, uh, well, YTS forms at West Ham. So. Um, Were you? Did I see on your Instagram the other day? It was Ian Roy who was playing a reserve game with you. Yeah, crikey, that was when I was at West Ham. It was a game where we played at, um, uh, at Highbury, and we played against Arsenal. And for some reason, their first team didn't have a game on the Saturday. I can't remember why. And we played pretty much against Arsenal's first team, and Ian Wright was one of those. And they beat us five three, and Ian Wright scored a hat trick in that game. But it was a great experience. I bet he was giving it all well, that anyway. Wasn't well, it? he's always giving it that anyway. <laughs> but when you when you sort of seventeen. Um, and playing at that level against that type of, of opposition, it's a good learning experience. Yeah, um, and then you went from, was it, did you get released by West Ham or did you cho choose to go to Bournemouth? Well, when I was at West Ham, I, um, I went on loan to Farnborough in the conference okay. and I played sort of six months in the conference um, for, for Farnborough when I was about 18, I think. Just for a first team football? Just to play first team football and I enjoyed that. It was great. It was great. I mean, first team football is so much more important than reserve team football. Reserve team football is good and you, you know, you're playing against some good players at times, um, but it doesn't really mean anything. Is, 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 it, is, it, is it as competitive, would you say? It probably, it probably competitive, more competitive reserve team football then than, you, than it is now in the under-23 football that okay. they play, I would have said, but it, but it doesn't really mean anything. If you get three points, you know, you, you might win the league, but it doesn't really mean anything, does it? Yeah. Whereas on a Saturday, if, you, if you're playing for three points that mean whether you're going to you know, not get relegated or get into the playoffs or get into, you know, trying to get promoted and, and you've got three or four thousand people there on the, on the sideline you know, cheering you on um, and expecting you to put in a performance, then it means so much more. So I, was, I, was, I had a six months spell there. I went on loan to Bournemouth um, when they were in League One and really enjoyed that there. Um, well, it must be nice to see them where they are now. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant to be honest. Um, I was there. I was there in a period where they had no money. I mean, absolutely no money. Yeah. And we're we're begging really, and, and we're not getting paid for two months at a time and things like that. And it, we almost went bust. To be honest, it, it was that close. Um, and and actually, I think selling me to Ipswich kept them alive at the time because they needed they needed the money. So to see them where they are now, it's just it's unrecognisable to be honest. I was down there, oh, blimey, a couple of weeks back, and I'm there again next week for the uh, Man United game. So I'm really looking forward to going back, and and it, it's great to see so so many ex players that I played with there doing so well as well. Eddie Howe was was in the team yeah. when I was playing. He made his debut, I think, in the um, uh, alongside me. So did you ever play with Jermaine Defoe? Jermaine Defoe came after me. I played with uh, Rio Ferdinand. So oh, Rio yeah. Ferdinand came down on loan. Uh, I think did Harry Redknapp have some sort of thing going yeah, on? Yeah, well, obviously he, he was the manager at Bournemouth for a period, wasn't he? So, yeah. being at West Ham, when 
when I was sort of looking at clubs to try and go on loan to, there was I think there was about three or four clubs I had the option to go to. But with Harry being the manager at West Ham and, and sort of had the Bournemouth connections, he yeah. said, oh, Bournemouth would be a good club for you, so yeah, I'm yeah. going there. I suppose in a way that was nice of him to kind of look back, look after them as well, you know? Well, definitely. I mean, he, he, he'd spent a lot of years there and he had some good times there. I think they beat Man United in the FA Cup in his time at, so, at yeah. the club as well. So, uh, yeah, but but then, so going back to to leaving West Ham, I, uh, I had the, I'd been on loan at Bournemouth and was looking to... Um, play first team football. Uh, I went back to West Ham and, and Harry offered me a new deal to stay at West Ham, but I just wanted to be playing first team football at that stage and, and I needed to leave really and, and do that, so I went and signed for Bournemouth. Okay, and then you, after Bournemouth, then how, um, how long did you stay at Bournemouth? I was at Bournemouth two and a half years, yeah, so um, I went there on loan uh, and I was in a, there another two full seasons before I signed for Ipswich. Okay, and then obviously Ipswich, was it, was it your first year you just got promoted? No, um, quite it was probably second or third season at, at um, Ipswich before we actually went up. When when was it um, when you became captain? When was it? When was, was that was that what you, would you call your breakthrough yeah. season? As well? No, the first season there was probably my breakthrough season because I won Player of the Year in the first season. There. I was tw I was twenty three okay. when I signed for Ipswich and um, we got into the playoffs. We got beat by Bolton, I think. Uh, I think it was Bolton the first season in the playoffs and but I'd scored I think I scored 12, 12 goals and I'd, but I played in lots of different positions as well I played centre half quite a bit you yeah I played I know yeah I played quite a, well, George Burley um, played a three at the back and he before it was he good had, well yeah exactly <laughs> and he had he had Steve Sedgley as his as his central um, uh, centre of the back three like in the season sweeper kind like of a sweeper thing. but and when he wanted to change he could put Steve Sedgley into midfield and Steve Sedgley left at the, at the season in the summer that I arrived. Okay. And I think he thought, oh, well, I could do that as well. So he played me in the middle of the three and, and at times sort of moved me into midfield. But um, I think about 10 games in, there was a game against Stoke and, and he put me into midfield. I played in midfield, I scored. And I think he thought, I'll play more in midfield now. But I started the first sort of 10 or 12 games at, at centre half for, for Ipswich. And then, and then he, I think he thought actually I'm I'm probably better in midfield where I could use my energy a bit more. Yeah, and you're a fan of a, a striker too, as well. So. When I was what sorry? You're a fan of a striker too as well. Uh, yeah, well exactly. I think that's the thing as well. I, I scored I scored against Stoke, and I, I think in the midweek we played Torquay in the cup, and I might have scored two at Torquay as well. I think he thought actually I'll I'll play him in because he might give me a goal or two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talk talk me through the season he's got promoted. My uncle's actually a big uh, Ipswich fan, right. so I want to feel <laughs> Well, uh, that season, I, I think we'd been knocking on the door. I think it was the fourth season in a row, actually, that we got to the playoffs. Um, I'd been there three, three seasons, so it was my third season of getting to yeah. the playoffs. But I think that year, we, it was a different feeling. It was a feeling that we thought we would go up. We'd, we'd, um, we'd had so many games where we'd gone behind in matches, but... We had such a close team spirit and we had a real good character about the squad that every game that we went behind him, we always felt we could come back. Yeah. And then even in the playoff final against Barnsley, we went behind early on in that game as well and we came back and, and, and won the game. So I just, Did I, you ever feel like you were going to lose the fun? Well, I suppose when you when you sort of two minutes into the game and you go a goal behind, it's, yeah. it's never great, is it? But I, I don't know, I just had a belief, I just had a belief about the, the club that season that we would, we would do it and... They yeah, had obviously playing at, playing at Wembley and and you know, lifting the trophy was was a special uh, occasion, and um, yeah, sort of ninety thousand people there it was it was a good day. Yeah, was it was it when was it around the time you got your first call up? Because I was in and around that time, wasn't it? So yeah, well we got pro it's probably that yeah that season actually that um, that we got promoted. I'm thinking because uh, went on. Um, I mean, my first appearance was um, my first competitive appearance, wasn't it, against Macedonia? Macedonia. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking that was '99, and we got promoted in 2000. So it'd be that season yeah, okay. that I got called up. Maybe the season before, like the the summer before, I went on tour to to America. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, how how did it come about? Uh, was it Mick McCarthy got in touch with you, or yeah? yeah. You, uh, well, I, did someone come I mean, and approach I'd, you? I'd sort of made it aware that I was, you know eligible to play for Ireland and I think I think there was a conversation between Mick and George Burley at the time yeah. about it um, and, and I, know, I think Mick had been to see me a couple of times and, and play and then I got a phone call at home 
I mean, it, you know, it was quite rare. Really. I suppose mobile phones were about, but um, I got a phone call at home. On the house phone? On the house phone. Oh, and, and, and said, oh, it's me. And I, I sort of thought, it's not really, is it? So Yeah, because you hear so many stories of players getting true. phone I mean, calls I, of, of wind-ups. I, 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 exactly, and I, and I was thinking at the time, I, I'm not sure, it's, is it him or not, is it him? I'm sort of looking at my wife, is it, is it really him? And, and um, anyway, cut a long story short, it, it, we had the conversation and um, I, immediately I just said, yeah, definitely love to be love to be called up, love to come along and play to be international actually against the League of Ireland uh, 11. And, and that was it really. From that moment on, I was pretty much in most of the squads actually. Okay, and then uh, talk us through your first competitive game. Yeah, <laughs> nightmare. Well, I mean, it's... We used to have the yellow jersey in training. Yeah. I've had a Macedonia because, yeah, 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 yeah. because you know, you'll know about that. And um, I mean, Jason McAteer was a season ticket holder of the yellow jersey. He won it most most training sessions. I think that's more for the more for the banter, really. Yeah, giving him a bit of stick. Um, but yeah, it was. It, it, I didn't know what was going. What what was happening really? I mean, sort of coming on ten minutes to go, thinking, you know, we, we're going to do it, and then of course they they equalised in, in the last minute with a header from a corner and um yeah it was it well the dressing room after that game was yeah i can else. imagine i remember sitting there watching with my dad i was only about eight or nine yeah. at the time and uh that's yeah, making, me, that's making me feel old no sorry you still look about 30 <laughs> anyway so I wish. but uh no like i remember him going like uh, oh, i almost thought he was going to show a chair to the tv like it was just one of them yeah. very frustrating times oh. but i mean going into the um the World Cup qualifiers then, that was a really good campaign. Yeah. Um, how was that for yourself? Well, it was good. I mean, I... Well, you, you would have been coming off probably your, your season then at Ipswich finishing fifth, was it? I'm trying to think now, yeah. But yeah, it, would have, it was in and around kind of uh, uh, similar times, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it, it had been getting promoted. So 2000, wouldn't it? So the, the, the yeah. qualifying campaign would have been sort of... Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, kind of coming yeah, into O2. Coming into O2. So it would have been in the, that first season in the Premier League. Uh, so sort of good, good times club level, and then trying to you know make a name for yourself on the international stage as well. Uh, a lot of competition for places. Obviously, Roy, who's um, world class, uh, Mark Kinsella, such an established player in the Premier League and, and you know fan, fantastic player in his own right. Lee yeah. Carsley, um, myself, we're all trying to vie for, for two positions really. Yeah. So it was a, a lot and of competition. You, you did play a lot of uh, the bigger games. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I obviously scored a few in the qualifying campaign as well, which which obviously helps. Yeah. Um, Could you just tell me what's, what was running through your mind the Portugal goal? Portugal goal. Yeah. It's it was funny. an absolute <laughs> cracking finish. It, it's funny because at half time, I came on at half time in the game, and mixed instructions were just sort of try and stay around where you go, you know, we're just going to, you know, Keep my shape. Don't yeah. Just don't, just, just, just don't, don't give me a lot of time. Don't give me any time. Any space. Anyway, sure enough. Ten minutes into coming on, they score one nil down. I'm thinking, oh no, I've come on and it's happened again. You know, Macedonia. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, happened, yeah. it's happened again. You come on and, and they they score, and uh, and then so we gradually, you know, we, we started to get into the game a bit. And um, when I picked the ball up, I saw, there was no one near me, and I was thinking. I, I, I think if, if you watch, if if anyone's watching and watches it on YouTube or anything, yeah. if you actually watch it back, it does look like you're just like, oh, I've got so much free time. Right? Yeah, I think it was probably a bit unexpected, really, because against quality opposition like that, you don't often get that much time. So, uh, I just had a touch, had another touch, and then thought, well, actually, I'm 25 yards from goal, I don't, you know, I quite like striking from yeah. distance, and I'll, I'll try my luck. And fortunately, it went in, and, and then after the game, sort of mixed. What did I say to you after the game? What did I say to you after time? Told you sit deep, don't go past the halfway line, etc. And then he started smiling and laughing, and, yeah. and um, he seems but, like that type of character. Yeah, he's he's great, Mick. He, I mean, obviously, a difficult sort of uh, couple of weeks he's had at, at Ipswich. Yeah, Town. yeah. And um, I, I live pretty near the club, so I sort of get to see what's going on and stuff. And so he's had a pretty tough time the last couple of weeks. But he'd be back in the job. Yeah, so he so, brought on. I think it was Barry Carter, and then he got booed for. Or he took him off or something. But yeah, yeah I mean, it, he was absolutely shattered. I think at the time, and um, but I think what whatever Mick did does at the moment, he sort of get, was going to get booed. Yeah, yeah. He sort of got to that stage, but he'll be back in the job soon. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I've no doubt. Um, just in terms of uh, then it was the the Holland game. Um, that was obviously a big game. Uh, I was actually a ball boy for that game. Oh yeah, a ball boy. Yeah. 
Um, and the only players I gave the ball to were uh, Arthur Newman and um, Ronald De Boer. Hopefully slowly. After uh, one, yeah, yeah. After one I, 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 I was uh, in the end where all the Dutch fans were. Right, so they were yeah. all behind me. Yeah. But uh, what a day that was. Uh, what, what was yeah. from, I suppose, from the team talk to kind of, you know, going out there. What was what was the aura around the team? I, I don't know really. I mean, the thing that sticks in my mind is a tackle from Roy. So and Mark Overmars. And Mark Overmars. Everyone, so everyone sticks in my mind. It's, it's it's not. It's probably as important as the goal I think in a lot of Irish people's minds like, yeah. that is the thing that Set I think, I think it's, it, it, they say that before they even mention the goal yeah. like, firstly well, I'm sorry you go and on and Gary Kelly getting sent off as well Yeah. so you, you know you put that into the mix as well but that sort of set the tone really I mean Mark Overmars must have gone six feet off the ground Yeah. and you know if you did that now you'd probably get a red card um, yeah but even even with the with Roy, like you see him throughout the game, the amount of times he would just carry the ball up the pitch, mm. and I don't even think there was a striker up, up at that end. He was just trying to carry us up, up the field. Like, yeah. I what mean, was it like being under that much pressure? Like, because it was a really good Dutch team. That was an excellent like, team. Like, yeah. Van Gaal in charge as well, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. Some of the players there were unbelievable. I the think end, they had Seedorf, Bergkamp, Kluivert. Well, at the end, there were the strikers on the pitch as well. Castle Bank came on, didn't he? So we were, we were certainly under a bit of pressure, and and we were indebted as well to Shea. Making some, yeah, some yeah, good he saves. was really good that day. The show was brilliant through when he's on it like that. Sometimes, you know, he was absolutely fantastic. Shay's a class act, yeah, yeah, a class act. Uh, even, even in the playoff, actually, you know, against Iran, he made some unbelievable saves. Yeah. In the I'm talking about in the home game as well. Um, I know away from home, so we were under a lot of pressure as well, but in the playoffs, he was he was amazing as well. He, he just, uh, I think if he gets an early save, uh, he seems to. Then he's just ready, boom. Yeah. Then he's going to save. He looks like he's going to save everything. You know. Well, he, I judge keepers on um, how many mistakes they make. And have a look back at Shea's career. I mean, it, everyone's going to make a mistake. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the but the better goalkeepers, I think, make the least mistakes. He doesn't make too many. So that's if he does, he makes a joke about them like the Andrew. Well, he's <laughs> he did yeah. in his book. Yeah. But uh, you know, because he he seemed to be his own kind of worst enemy in his mind. Like I read his book, and he he's very critical of himself, um, and and. He seemed to be a player, I think a, lot of a leader too, though. I think a lot of players are. I think you're you're sort of more critical of yourself than anybody else. I think yeah. because you know you, you want to improve, you want to be better all the time, and and to do that you have to analyse yourself and and you have to be critical. I mean, my my biggest critic was probably my dad. You know, well, me and my dad. Even if you had a good game, well, yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd sort of we'd, we'd that talk it over. You know, you'd cut, you'd, my dad watched so many of my matches, but we'd talk things over. You could have done this, could have done that, and so you're always looking. At, at ways of improving all the time. I think a lot of players are the same. Yeah, well, that's the best professionals always will be. Um, just in terms of Jason's goal, Jason McIntyre's goal. Yeah. Like, what was that the balls like for you guys? Wow. Yeah. I used to, that's still like one of the we'll go down. It's an one, iconic one, one, goal. one of the uh, biggest games in our history. Yeah. Uh, iconic goal. I mean, great finish as well. Yeah. I can't remember ever doing that again. I think my dad had the first goal scorer that day too, so he oh, was wow. pretty tough. We were, yeah. Me and my brother were ball boys and got the, the winning dock at then as well for uh, first goal scorer. So. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I think it was Stephen and he put the ball across, wasn't it? Yes, I think so. And um, and it was a really good finish from, from Jason and the, the celebrations then were were pretty good. Um, yeah, and you, I think you see the majority of the team there celebrating the goal as well and that showed the closeness of, of the squad as well. Yeah, so you said that like the celebrations uh, were running high and everything, but then I was watching a documentary, uh, and you can see there's a bit of a thing between Roy and Mick McCarthy. Uh, was it was it was it was there something going on at the time in in, in the kind of setup, or was uh, that just one of the pictures that just looked like that? Yeah, I don't know. I never felt there was any anything between the two. You know, often you get a feeling if there's a bit of animosity between a yeah. couple of people, you get a feeling for it, but. I never felt that at all. Um, I've seen the pictures. I've seen the pictures myself. Um, so, because I wouldn't have thought at that time. Well, I was only a kid at the time, but uh, you wouldn't have really thought about. It. And then I watched that back because um, it is all to do with like the 2002 World Cup and all. Um, but I just thought it was it was a bit mad looking because it, it's one of the biggest wins ever. And Mick's like delighted, and Roy was just like yeah, shake. <laughs> but Roy was like that. Any result really. Was he? Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I wasn't there. We drew two all in Holland, 
in that qualifying campaign. Yeah. And the lads were buzzing after and the game. And Everyone was buzzing after the game, apparently. You know, come back, you know, we, um, we've got a draw to all in Holland. Um, but Roy's like, we are talking about, why, why are you happy? Yeah. We're just giving up the two goal lead. You know, we, we're drawn to all. It, so, you know, he was never sat. He was one of those people who never satisfied. He always, yeah. wanted, he always wanted more. So was it was that he set a standard to hold? Yeah, it was a Manchester exactly. United, was it? Well, Man United, whether it's Man United or whether it's him personally, you know, he sets his standards up there, and, and he expects everyone else to follow. You know, he's the hardest person to train with because I was going to ask you, was he? Well, he, well, he demanded so much from everybody. You know, <laughs> um, if you're losing a five aside, it, it'd be snapping and snarling and growling at everyone and give me the ball and because he had that winning mentality and it didn't matter whether it, whether it was five a side whether it was an international whether it was playing cards or whatever he wanted to he wanted to win yeah and Clinton Morrison had a funny story about him uh, I think he misplaced the pass or something and he told Roy to shut up and he went back in a half time expecting to be roasted and uh, but Roy actually came over and told him that he was right uh, it was a bad pass but oh, really? he was really worried that he was going to kick off he did that he, he, he did that to me once um, I think it might have been Cyprus and and we we beat them four 0 in the end. But um, he played with the ball in midfield. I miscontrolled it, and they went on the attack and had a shot. Shea saved, and he gave me an absolute rocket. But you think he's right because yeah. I shouldn't have miscontrolled it. But he fired. It, I mean, he fired passes in. He's ten, fifteen yard passes. He absolutely rocketed them into you. But you're testing your touch and everything. Um, but he was absolutely right. I shouldn't have given it away. Yeah. But he, and that's the sort of thing he demands. You know more from everyone around him and gets the best from from players around him because next time I was thinking next time he gives him a ball there's no way I can miscontrol it yeah. after what he's just given me and w would he would he have brought your game up yeah definitely I think he brought everyone's game up I mean, he, did, did, did he, would he give you any advice basically like or to, to make as a uh, to be honest um, would he say it, anything that you could maybe Roy like, was very it? open Roy was always very open to to talking about things and you know I used to, Grill him. I was a Man United fan, so I used to grill him about Man United all the time. And you know, what do you do? What, what, what's the extra stuff that you do? And what what makes Man United better than everybody else? Yeah. And so I used to grill him all the time. Almost like, probably, a, like a like a like a mean speaking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He probably hated it. He probably absolutely hated it. Um, but uh, but on occasions he was so open about it and 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 willing to sort of pass that information on as well. So he was, he was yeah, it was great. Yeah. Well, um, onto onto the World Cup then. Um, use there's obviously the whole Saipan thing and it's, it, I'd say you probably every time you meet someone you get asked <laughs> about it there. It's probably the it's probably the first question people ask you really. And and there's been so much talk about it over the years. There's been you know, everyone's had their say on it. Yeah. They? No, I was reading I read, I was reading Shay Gibbons book just talking about how like hostile it was when uh, between uh, Roy was going over and he was giving out to everybody and he was going over to the uh, goalkeepers, uh, he was going over to Alan Kelly. Um, and he was he was screaming at him and going mad at him and the goalkeepers can't tell them I think the keepers were having a rest for a while he was like why are they resting something or five side with that keepers or something yeah maybe something along them lines and he was just he just seemed to be kind of going at everybody and then uh, he just lost the plot then it seems um, I thought it was very fun. I think it was I think in Shay's book he, he quotes uh, I think it's either Dean Kiley or Gary Kelly as someone who goes oh well uh, he walked out Roy fumed snapped and left the room and uh, someone cracked a joke I don't know who it I was I think it was Dean Kiley I think he said don't worry he said because I can play in midfield yeah yeah and then the, apparently that it went from really 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 hostile yeah. to okay he, he's gone we're going to have to get on but you know we can do this without him type of thing that's what it seemed like in the book we had to do it without him simple as that you know um, yeah, it was a difficult situation because you, you're losing a world class player and actually a lot of the stuff that he was saying was was right yeah <laughs> and again it's, it's that thing of him having those high standards you know uh, and sometimes you have to realize that, that the FAI isn't Man United either and particularly at that time yeah, they didn't have the money and funding yeah. etc but in terms of you know the pitch not being right the balls not arriving all that sort of stuff he had a lot of valid points yeah to be honest um, I think Mick just took an exception really to how he went about making those points yeah you probably could have done it in private or something like well, that I think, yeah I think I think they'd done it in private I think and, and then it became public oh okay and sort of, so that, I think that was oh the, something to do with going to the media or something I like think that, that was the, I think that was the biggest issue but as I say it was, it was difficult when you're losing you know your, your player that's, that would walk into any other international team yeah he was he at the time he was in and around the world's best players yeah 
definitely. Yeah, definitely at that time. Yeah. Um, and he, as you said, he, he would have brought everybody's game up. But it seems like he, uh, in Shay's book again, quote Shay's book, but uh, he just seems to see he was almost fighting himself at, at the World Cup. It seemed. But uh, how were you feeling just losing him? He was just, just like, we're gonna have to get on with him, or were you just, just like, we was sad, or I don't know what what was going through your, he- your head? Weird, you, really, because you would he was your midfield partner, like, you know. Yeah, a w- a weird feeling. It was a strange feeling. Um, as I say, to, to lose him, um, but then yeah, the jokes flow, don't they? And and, and sort of. Yeah. It seemed like a really good bunch of lads. Great lads. I mean, yeah, straight away, there's the, the, like Gary Kelly, I think, that put a mannequin of Roy where his seat was on the bus and on the way to training and things like that. All the, all those sort of things happen, don't they? And, and you make a joke of it. And the, and this is sort of, I think, two weeks before the first game. And so by the time sort of it all moves on, yeah, it, that sort of happened maybe two years ago it feels like yeah because it's it was a but there's, there is that thing I like coach up in Canada myself and there is that thing when you're in with people and you get to know them and stuff like that and you're on the road with them it does feel like it could be two weeks but it feels like I'd say six months to a year exactly. like it can yeah. and you feel like you really get to know people and well, stuff like that you well, know? I mean you're in, a, you're in a sort of environment where you, you're living in each other's pockets really yeah. yeah, yeah, your room. So my my roommate was Damon Duff through that that tournament. Um, Sleepyhead Duffer. Sleepyhead, crikey, yeah, he could sleep eighteen hours a day. He uh, <laughs> he needed his eighteen hours a day, but he's another great lad. I mean, that, they're all brilliant lads, really. And and when you when there always fun, seems to be that that thing with the Irish players. They were very close knit. Like the, yeah. even the like players today when they get together, it all seems like they're very tight knit. It's like it's like a club environment. It really is, and, and uh, you know you. You read some of the stories about other t- other international camps, and you know, there's a bit of fractions really. You know, say even Spain, the Real Madrid players, the Barcelona players, yeah, and, and, the know, Ramos and Pique played all beside that, each other, all that sort of stuff that that goes on. But there's none of that, you know, and it's encouraged to 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 um, be sociable and you know get, get in the game room and sit and have chats and stories yeah. now Quinn used to just tell story after story him and you know Steve Storms and some of the things that had gone in in their time and, and we just lapped it up and just taking it all in really all the time so we it was as tough lose, losing him but like it's like the old saying life goes on yeah and you, and you have to move on simple as that I mean Mark Kinsler wasn't a bad replacement to have beside you like and he seemed to be very fond of you we we got on really well. I mean, I, we'd we'd come up against each other a couple of times in in playoffs at Charlton and uh, when I was at Ipswich and played against each other quite a bit. Uh, we um, we played together quite a lot previously as yeah. well. I mean, um, I think the Estonia game stands out where we 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 played pretty well together. And um, Roy, I think, got suspended maybe and didn't and couldn't travel to play in Estonia. Um, we were won, we won two nil, um, but we yeah we got on really well um, myself and Kinson. Uh, I mean, it's, it, people say oh you, you, Roy going is great for you because it meant you played. I, I sort of felt I was probably in position to play. Yeah, when well, you were playing in the bigger but, games, you not it's, nothing's guaranteed. You take yeah. nothing for granted at all. Mick was a sort of manager though that was very loyal. The players that had the shirt. You have to do something disastrously bad yeah. to lose the shirt, okay, yeah. it, or you're injured, or a bit of bad luck, or whatever. Martin so, O'Neill seems to be with, like that. At the yeah, moment. and I think, uh, and I think that's that's good as a player because you, you feel as though he trusts you and he, yeah, and, and you're wanted, stuff. and you're wanted. It's then a little bit harder for the ones who are not sort of playing, I, I guess. But again, you know, even at that World Cup, there's there's players there who didn't get a minute, and yet, yeah, and yet, never a problem, you're never never an issue at all. Um, and th- and that must have been hard for those players at, at the World Cup who, did, who didn't even get a minute to play. Even Colin Healy, was good. Even Colin Healy could have could have been in the squad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the Roy came back, then he left again. So yeah, it was just that too late, wasn't it? In the end, yeah. yeah. But on a more positive note, uh, the Cameroon game comes along. Mm. Um, tell me uh, your thoughts on that game as, well, a, as a whole. We didn't play particularly well. One of the best first, days of my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the amount of kids that say to me, oh, "I missed exams because of that goal." Yeah. Um, it, it was uh, not the best first half, to be honest. We didn't play particularly well, and the, the mantra of that World Cup had been no regrets. So when we walked into the into the dressing room, there was signs up everywhere: no regrets, no regrets, no regrets. And at half time, I remember Mick coming in and, and sort of saying, "What we've we been saying for the last two weeks, what we've we been saying in the build up to the game," and he was pointing to these signs saying, "Look, no regrets." 
he said, we're having plenty of regrets here at half time because we haven't played well at all and we haven't done well enough. Um, and the second half we, we got on top and we started to, to gradually, you know, um, start creating more chances. And was then, was Eto playing then? Eto played, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was mm. way back for me. Yeah, well, he, he's, um, it was his run, I think, that, that set and bomber up for the, oh, for yeah, the yeah. opener. So, uh, yeah, and then and then the ball fell to me on the edge of the box. Yeah, Kilban whips in the ball. And then there's a the centre back, I think. It's a kind of weird type of header. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't really complain. No, it's it, a good assist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it sat up nice, and it's one of those where you sort of like, you could have had a touch. You could, you know, you could have done lots of things, but the way it sort of sat up, you just felt it was there to be hit, really. Yeah, it was that that was one of the fever and over balls, wasn't it? Yeah, and just fever and over. It was like a goal. Yeah, yeah but right. it was one of those that swerved. We was encouraged to to strike the ball more because of that. I don't know, to be honest. Actually, I still got the ball. Oh, have you? Uh, well, oh, whether it's the ball, on okay, the ball. I've got a match yeah, ball from that game. Because because Mick Byrne sort of nicked one. I say okay. I say nicked one. He sort of <laughs> he managed to get a hold yeah, of him yeah. afterwards and, and sort of gave it to me. Gave it to me in the dressing room after the game and said that's for you. So uh, yeah, it was a great feeling. My, my dad was there, my wife and two kids uh, in the, in the crowd as well. Uh, I'd seen them before the game because when we arrived, we got there quite early and they'd been there really early. And they were sat in their seats. Yeah. So when we were sort of doing the walk out and looking around the ground and stuff, we, we I knew where they were. And when I scored, I didn't really know what to do. Do you? He's like, you, yeah. you go a bit mad. Especially in a World Cup. You, you go a bit mad anyway. Every time you score, but that at that, that you know um, tournament and to do it in a World Cup and to play the World Cup was special. To to actually score was amazing. And so I sort of ran round the back of the goal then and to where they were. And it's only afterwards that my wife tells me that that um, my one of my boys was asleep and that. She'd had a can of coke in her hand, I think, and scored, and she'd thrown a coke over everyone around her, but they, no one cared. It was just, yeah. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, it was a special moment, really special. It was a really nice try, though. It was a proper daisy quarter, wasn't it? Yeah, I caught it really. I, I did catch it nicely. Did uh, you know just the minute it left your foot? Well, when I, when I hit it, I thought I've hit that sweetly, and okay. I thought it's got a chance. That's, that's sort of what you well, think. That's what you want, yeah? Well, yeah, and, and then sort of, I'm seeing the goalkeeper going down, I'm thinking, please don't get it, please don't get it. And, Luckily enough, it went, it went in the back of the net, and Robbie sort of jumping on my shoulders, and, and Duffer and um, Kins. So uh, I was trying to shrug them all off just so I could sort of. Sit yeah, yeah dad I remember you like and, that with the two hands. And dad and my mum, uh, my, my, my uh, wife and stuff. So yeah, pretty special. And then you, um, did uh, Mick McCarthy say anything uh, about uh, sitting deep that game? No, no, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, I think he was just. No happy to, I think he was just happy to get that game out of the way. Yeah, really, but it was. It was vital of, to get the point because of everything that had gone on in the build up as well. And there was a lot of pressure going in because there was a lot of talk back home. Should yeah. they have been there? Should not have been there? And all that sort of stuff. So and then there was the stuff about going around with his dogs and stuff. And there was, well, it was yeah, more about him than more so probably the team. Yeah, that, over, by to, the media, to be honest, it, that that suited us, I think, as well. Oh, okay. And and the fact that we were in Japan, it was. Uh, we we weren't aware of what was going on back home, yeah. As well, so actually, it probably was was good for us that we it wasn't a, a near a world. Yeah, or, or even it would have been or, more of a distraction probably. Or, or even now, where social media is so active and everything, yeah. that we'd have known and, and been well aware of what the reaction was back home. We didn't really know, and we were kept away from it really okay. in terms of the paper. Don't look that at was, the that was very good then. stuff. So actually, it was it was pretty good really, and um, we could just focus on on the football ahead of us. Um, so I think, it, but but Mick was just I think glad to get that game out of the way. Yeah, and then you, it was we played Germany, then Saudi Arabia. So talk me through, through the Germany game. Um, that was another game where we missed a lot of skill because of that. Yeah, because well, that was an easy that was a very good uh, team. Game. Um, I think it might have been. I think it, was, it would have been around one or half two maybe. I think because I remember right, watching okay. skill. Uh, when Robbie scored the goal at the end, we were all jumping around yeah. in the classroom. So um, we would have been finished around half two uh, in the afternoon. Yeah, two thirty for any is uh, of American <laughs> Canada. We go behind again, and um, but actually, what, what a team they were as well. I mean, yeah, yeah. like Balak and yeah, I was Khan, etc. Yeah. Balak, that's, uh, was, I Close think he was playing with uh, Leverkusen at the time, and then they get the Champions League final yeah. around that time. Miroslav left players were up top, uh, and Neuville as well. He was quite yeah. good. Yeah, no, they were good. They were a good team, and. Um, goal behind again, and I, I actually had another chance, very similar to the goal against Cameroon. It, it yeah. fell on the edge of the box, and it just went the wrong side of the post. Um, and then obviously scoring so late was, 
what a, what a feeling that long was. Long ball to Quinny, and then hey, don't Robbie. knock it. Don't knock it. They are long oh, ball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you've got it in your locker, use it. And, and Quinny was brilliant actually when he came on. Uh, and Robbie obviously managed to find the finish, but the celebrations in the corner and oh, uh, uh, it's just yeah. Even now, it's just wow. Yeah, well, uh, that was a brilliant result. Uh, I was so excited as a kid. I, I think as I came, I think everyone thought we were going to win it. Wow. <laughs> you know, you do, even now, you do, you do look back and think, what if, you know, you just don't know, do you? You just, but hey. Yeah. Um, so we had to go against Saudi Arabia then, and we had to beat them, I think, was it over three goals we had to beat them, or three? Uh, goal difference was uh, against us. I don't know, really. I can't, I, can't, uh, I just remember. I remember because remember Gary Breen got the goal, and... There's obviously Duffer then with yeah. the, the iconic yeah. um, celebration. Uh, I think Robbie got one then, was it? Is yeah. That? So uh, Robbie, I think we had Robbie to win. The old, um, the oh, you thought that? Arrow, uh, that bow and arrow, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something along them lines, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I know what you're um, referenced. But uh, I think we had to beat them 3-0, I think, for a goal difference. I right. think that was... Uh, um, we, I don't think we. I don't think we got into game think, worrying about that particularly. I think it was just win the game. Yeah. Okay. Win the game, really, and then you know, obviously, see where that takes us. I think it was something to do with because remember, Germany had scored so many goals against uh, Saudi Arabia. That's right. And then I think it was between us and Cameroon. That's right. And I think I think that's how it, it was. It, yeah. it unfolded. I'm not 100 percent sure on it, but uh, I think that's the way it kind of worked out. Um, what do you think of the whole uh, Gary Green thing? We all dream of a team of Gary Green. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Good. I, it's nice to have those sort of songs, isn't it? And yeah. We keep something. you on the bench, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, hey, team of Gary brings. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Spain game. Um, I remember I was watch. I was actually watching that down in uh, County Clare, uh, with my whole family. I had friends over from Liverpool. Um, that they were supporting Ireland, like. Um, but that game, like they, again, we were coming up against some really, really good teams, and you know. We were unlucky. Uh, Ian Hatton's the penalty. Didn't yeah, we? yeah, we, 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 yeah, we were unlucky. I think, I think we were unlucky over the course of the the, the ninety minutes and extra time, and then obviously the penalties. Um, so you go from the high of scoring in the World Cup to the to the the lowest of the low, really, and missing a penalty in the World Cup. I mean, that was um, that's probably the hardest moment individually in my career. Really? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I, I. Really, it really affected me definitely. Um, we uh, so the penalty shootout had finished, and afterwards, um, myself and Robbie got taken off for a drugs test straight after the game. But I didn't go into the dressing room, straight into the drugs room in there hours because you're dehydrated, you've been you played two hours of football. Um, it must have taken us two hours to provide a sample at least. But the bus waited for us. I mean, that was amazing, really, because the bus should, yeah. have, bus should they should have gone back to the hotel and we just got a car. Everyone probably feel miserable but, too. So, so they, but they waited the whole time for for us to get on the thing. We went back to the hotel and and um, I just didn't want to, I just couldn't really face the world, if you like. And it was it was only it was Kevin Kilban actually that came and um, said, "Come on, let's let's go have a few beers and and you know." And it, it was brilliant, Kev. It, it was I needed it. Made it really tough. And um, so for Kev to come and take the time out and, and sort of come and say, come on, let's have a few beers, it, 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 made, it meant a lot to me. And, um, and, and I, needed it, I needed it at that time. And was, was there anyone else coming over to try and kind of put like the everyone did, on? everyone did. I mean, uh, uh, you know, walking around after the, after the game, Nile Quinn, I remember really, you know, being brilliant as well, saying you, that you've had a great tournament, don't let this cloud it, blah, 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 all those nice things, but the, the nice to hear, but you don't want to hear it yeah, like yeah. as well, because you, you so it's, no matter what, it's it's it's, it's still there. It's in there. So, and uh, just just on the subject, just I'll just go off piece a little bit. But um, the the next time it came to a penalty shootout, I was playing for Ipswich, and it was a UEFA Cup game. Okay. And it was that uh, that that happened in the summer. It might have been sort of November or something. We we'd gone to penalties. That was after the the, so, the really good season, yeah. So yeah, so we yeah we're in the UEFA Cup, um, and he. It went to penalties and Joe, Joe Royal was the manager at the time at Ipswich and he sort of looked I met around. him a few times, nice guy. He's a great guy, Joe. And uh, he looked around the, the lads and said, right, who wants a penalty? And, and I said, no, nah, I don't want one. He said, a few pounds went up. And he went, what do you mean you don't want one? He said, you're having the first one. He said, you'll take the first penalty. Said, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, he ended up taking it, scored. Came back in the dressing room afterwards and as I walked into the dressing room, he, he just went, 
get back on the bike, son, get back on the bike. As if to say, like, that's out of your memory. Like, yeah. That happened, it's done. You've scored a penalty again now, you can do it. Just And did he know, did he remember from... Know, he must have done, he must have done. I didn't sort of, you know, but, but I, my reaction was, no, I don't want a penalty. Yeah. And he knew then... He, a, he's another one of those people who seems to have that kind of aura about yeah. him. He kind of like Bobby Robson, obviously not to that... Uh, extent but he seems like anyone I've sp spoken to any footballers no, they always say it. and I've met him two or three times at uh, Everton gigs yeah. and stuff like that and he's a, he, he seems like a top guy yeah his man management is brilliant as well he's really good yeah now um, obviously after the World Cup then Mick McCarthy and the team seem to seem to struggle a bit uh, and then Brian, Brian Kerr came in yeah. um, how was that kind of shift and change around for you guys yeah it's tough wasn't it we with obviously you know, Mick and yeah, and um, again, as you said, he was quite loyal to you guys. So did you yeah. feel kind of the same way? Yeah, I think so. And and you know, the fact that we hadn't performed for him as well, as, I suppose, as much as anything after yeah. the, after the World Cup, we we, I think from go, it was always going to be difficult. I think to tr from going where we'd been at the World Cup and the level we'd got to, and then to try and keep it going into the next, you know, it was, so it, that was tough though. And um, and obviously Brian coming in, Brian Brian. Um, was was a good character. I like yeah. him. And, and he would you have known him because he came like from a League of Ireland, an underage set up kind of background. I know most of the lads. A lot of the known. lads did. Yeah. A lot of the lads did. Yeah. And and uh, you know, obviously they they played under him quite a bit. At, yeah. Didn't they? They well. won uh, seventeens, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They won. Uh, yeah, it was Robbie Duff. Was it Duff Duffer and Dunny? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So, um, yeah. So it's a lot of the lads knew him anyway. Um, and just different characters and, and getting used to a new manager and you know all that sort of stuff it takes time um but but i like brian he was he was good yeah and he actually gave you a, a, the captaincy didn't he yeah scotland yeah, it was the first time so that was that was special i mean that was really special uh you know i've still got the the um the armband from the game oh. and uh, the you know the, the um like what they call the plaque the plaques that they give you, you swap over with the map the yeah, yeah yeah and you have the little um I know what you mean. Flag, a little flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, can't, I can't think of the word off the top of my head. Um, but they, they, we swap those, and so I've got that at home as well. So it's nice. And um, so obviously, you've pretty much been captain everywhere you've been. Yeah. Except yeah. maybe West Ham. Did you? Did you always well, feel I was captain of reserves? Oh well, then there <laughs> you go. Add that, add that to the list. Captain of the youth team. I, yeah, I've everywhere I've been. I, I even from the, sort of the age of nine, ten, I was always captain i don't know i don't really know why to be honest but were you, were you the loudest were you the uh, no, see, you I, leader and like... i guess yeah, I, i've done about being the loudest i certainly wasn't the loudest in the dressing room but but on the pitch it's funny i and, and god bless his soul but ray wilkins yeah. recently and, and i worked a lot with ray at, at talk sports so i'm really sad what what happened recently but he said you can be as nice as you like off the pitch but when you cross the white line you have to be a different person, and I, I always was. I always was a different person when I crossed the white line. I had that sort of winning mentality and that that desire to to succeed. Um, whether it be the running in training, I wanted to be the first. You know, not I wasn't always first, but yeah. I wanted to be the first. And I had that desire to be the best I could possibly be. And I was never the I was never the greatest footballer that's ever lived, and there's far better players than me that never made it never made a career in football you know going back to my time at West Ham and in the youth team and stuff yeah. better players than me technically and everything but I think my desire and, and uh, appetite to succeed is yeah probably, probably the, you probably would have taken the rejection a bit worse than you maybe well it, you channeled that uh, going into that, go into that rejection else. I mean I, you know like I say a lot of players would have crumbled and, and perhaps gone yeah, to the yeah. side but but there's others that, that go the other way and I, I probably went the other way but that's probably why I think a lot of managers sort of saw cats in material in me if you like because I rather than being a baller and a shouter I was more a leader by example if you like yeah. so um, try and yeah try and lead by example if I could um, yeah so then um, on to our international retirements uh, Steve Staunton then uh, it was obviously there was a uh, Brian Kerr um, didn't do too well in the job uh, I'd say at times it was a bit unlucky. Yeah, I think, I think a bit unlucky even at times. Shay Given came out and said it. But uh, there was also uh, Shay Given came out and said that um, you know uh, he seemed a little bit out of his depth. Um, that's he said that in his book. He said he, he felt like he was a bit out of his depth, and some of the lads felt like that. But um, he anyway uh, gets kind of passed on. 
and then Steve Staunton comes in. Was there anything? Did he try to talk you into coming back to play? Or? Yeah, he did. yeah, he did. I did speak to Steve, and, and obviously we had, we had a good relationship as um, uh, uh, as teammates as well. And we, um, he uh, he did phone me up. We had a chat, and uh, I suppose in some ways maybe I wish I'd, I'd probably. And I, yeah, maybe, but I, I was at a stage where I was sort of starting to find myself a little bit in and out of the team, and um, had a couple of injuries. What was I, 32, 33, kind of 33, I think, and um, wanted to try and play as long as I possibly could. So they like, prolong your club career. Yeah, but so it was a difficult, it was a difficult one really. But yeah, I suppose in some ways I, I maybe wish I probably had done. Another one. Yeah, but at the same time, prolonging your club career, that's the one that really pays your wages too, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, looking back, maybe I wish I'd sort of had one more one more campaign, really. Um, but, hey, um, yeah, it was, totally, it was diff difficult, really. Um, and, and, you know, I ended up, I suppose, I ended up playing another couple of years, two or three years, and um, retired eventually at, at 35. Yeah, but that's quite young to to retire. You look at players these days, like yeah, um, I guess I mean, so. you're in a decent child and team, like as well. I, you know, I thought yeah, it has some really good players there. I, I I didn't intend to retire that summer. I okay. actually intended to carry on. And um, the, the, Phil Parkinson was a manager at Charlton, and he he, uh, he asked um, he sort of said, "Oh yeah, we'll give you a new contract, stay next season, all that sort of stuff." And never materialised over the summer, the, the, you know, the conversations between the club and, and myself didn't really happen and I ended up going to Colchester just to keep fit because it was in my local club, it was yeah. just down the road, Paul Lambert was the manager actually and um, Stoke, man, said yeah. yeah, so he said yeah you can come in do some training, so I trained sort of two or three weeks and I had a couple of offers to carry on elsewhere um, but it would have meant me leaving home for a year's contract, probably League One at the time I just sort of was coming to a stage in my career where um, I didn't really want to do that. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be leaving the home for yeah. for a year. Somewhere. I didn't want to like root the fans from where they were for a year's contract in League One, particularly. So it, it it sort of ended up retirement coming on a bit quicker than I expected. To okay. Be it, it sort of. You never really hear of that. Like um, most players, be gone. They get an injury that yeah. that makes them go, or you know. So it's, I, I didn't know that. No. Yeah. So I would have liked to have. I would have liked to have carried on, really, and, and felt I could have carried on. Certainly felt fit enough to to carry on for, yeah. for another season or two. Um, but it sort of yeah just crept up on me quicker than I than I expected, really. Like I say, I could have carried on. I had opportunities. I had offers to do so. Um, but by that stage as well, I'd, I'd started to do a bit more media stuff. I'd started to do um, a, bit, a bit more commentary, a bit more working at. Or talk sport I started to work at and um, and doing some TV stuff and, and sort of fell into that really and there was, a, there was a guy a local guy who asked me to do some presenting for local TV on the, on late kickoff it was called it's the, uh, uh, local teams in the football league yeah and and so I ended up doing that really and that's that's sort of where I fell into and, and is that what you do now media work just for people who, who yeah so I do. I work. I worked. Um, I work for the Premier League, so I work. I do a show on a Thursday for them, and I do a commentary on a Saturday at, yeah. at a game, wherever it might be. I work for Talk Sport. Um, I'm off to Russia this summer to do the World Cup. Cool. Cover the World Cup. I'm up to. The, I'm staying up to the quarterfinals. So I've got a month in Russia to look forward to. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I do now. I work that it can be sort of four or five days a week something like that it depends three, four or five days yeah, a week yeah I'd tell you it can depend as well as Champions League it all as depends well. on what sort of weeks what, what, what sort of the weeks are and stuff um, I mean people always ask about the coaching as well do you, do you not fancy get into that I had, when I, I was I, I know a job close to home I'm looking for something <laughs> <laughs> yeah a few people have said that to me as well this week uh, it, when I was at Charlton Ian Dowie took over for a little while and he actually offered me the reserve team manager job when I was there and I started doing my B licence and but I felt he was trying to pension me off too early. I was thirty three, I think maybe oh, okay. at the time and I said, look, I said I want to concentrate on trying to get in the first team rather than the actual coaching side of it at this particular moment. Um, but did my B licence, enjoyed doing it. And if the right opportunity had come at the right time then maybe I would have sort of gone into it. Now I'm I'm nine years retired this summer. So still look like you're playing. 
I wish I was still playing. <laughs> I've got I've got three or four charity games lined up okay. already through May. So I'm looking forward to those, although I've got a sore calf at the moment. So. You know, you have the, you have the yeah. back baller now, so you yes, exactly. So I need a bit, need a bit of treatment. Shout out Noel yeah. Marshall. <laughs> need a bit of treatment actually. The next sort of few weeks, get myself fit for those. Um, but yeah, but nine years retired, I'm probably too, too long out of it now to go back into management. Yeah, I think it's, some players have said that they kind of fall out of it, and I, I wouldn't go back into it. Well, I'm not saying I wouldn't. Oh, you wouldn't. Okay. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I'm not saying I wouldn't. But I just, I just think that my time has probably passed now, and you get, you get quickly forgotten as well when you're, yeah. when you're not in it. Well, it's one of those things, isn't it? As well, you, you have to kind of put a lot of time into it. As uh, well, it's, so it's, a, it's a long process. Management as well is is probably the hardest job. Yeah, it's twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. You never know what's going to happen. In the, um, well, you're basically in control of everything at the club, right? Yeah, oh, so, and, so, so, so say. And, and you're a game away from being a genius, and you're a game away from the sack. Yeah, basically, it's so. Demanding. And you're not even the one kicking the ball. Like. It's so demanding. I mean, it's your team, your tactics, your selection that that goes out on the pitch, and and every time I watch a game, I always watch it through a manager's eyes. And how would I change it? What would I do? How would I play? What all those sort of things? I always try and think, what would I do? But it's such a tough job. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, I was actually going to touch on because a lot of people have asked me to ask you, like, uh, just in terms of the current uh, state of affairs with the Irish team, uh, what what do you think were were on the rise, or do you think we're on the decline, or on the decline, or do you? And um, the other question was, um, do you think Martin is the right man for the job? It's a, it's a difficult one, I think, at the moment. I think you're as good as your players, aren't you? That's as a manager. Yeah. You're as, you're as good as what you can pick. Um, uh, and probably the squad isn't as strong as it has been in in previous years. Well, around your time, you you would have been in a, a, a very gifted. It was team. it was just it was a strong. I mean, you know, you, you have players there playing regularly in the Champions League and all that sort of stuff, yeah. and it's not not necessarily the case right now. So it's yeah. tough, I think. Um, I think James Cullen probably would be the highest, uh, or oh, Burnley are probably the highest. Burnley going well. Now, yeah, well. Burnley going very well this year. Um, so it's I think it's a t- it's a tough one at, at the moment. I think we have got some really good players. I think there are some talents, plenty of talented players. Yeah. Isn't it? I thought in, in a way he was he was quite, quite unlucky because, you know, there was the games like against Wales and stuff like that, and we went out and gave a performance. Yeah. You know, we thought we were unlucky against Serbia. I mean, he, like, he yeah. was getting a lot of criticism when he tried to go for it, and they lost against so, Austria or uh, the Serbia. The Serbia game. Yeah, we did. We we were robbed against Austria. I thought. Yeah. Uh, but um, like this, this, some games, as you say, you're a game away from being a genius. And you're yeah. a game away from well, Denmark. I mean, Denmark's the prime example, isn't it? At half time, he makes those two, those, those changes. He goes really attacking. If it works, everyone goes. Yeah. Everyone goes. Oh, Martin O'Neill, tactical genius. He, he knows. You know, he's brilliant. What 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 substitutions they were at half time. Yeah. They lose, and as heavily as they did, and everyone's hammering him. So that's the fine line. As a manager, you're, yeah, exactly. you're next on the block, and you make those decisions, and you make those split decisions, and you have to make them quickly. And so it, it, that's what I'm saying about management being such a tough job. The problem, one of the biggest problems right now, is goal scorer, isn't it? Yeah, that's something that we, we seem to be. Yeah, you know, I totally agree. Obviously, Sean McGuire's coming yeah. through, but I think it's a bit early to be dependent on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I just feel as though, um, and again, if Scott Hogan scores that goal in that friendly um, against Turkey, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's like, oh, it's yeah. the new Robbie Keane. It's always going to be that way. But, but, because Robbie was t- uh, t- the that's the problem. I mean, that's the problem. When you've had someone like Robbie for that lo- length of time and that period and scoring the amount of goals that he did, try and, you try and replace that. Yeah. It's mad that he went, I think it was nearly two years ago. And, and when you think the previous highest goal scorer was 21. Yeah. So, yeah, Quinney, wasn't it? Yeah. And Frank Stapleton. Then, so, so. so it's just they don't grow on trees, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's the, that's the biggest problem. Yeah, but I think in terms of like our defenders, we have a good course Premier League yeah. defenders now. Well, Coleman, Duffy, Clark, uh, Long as well, Long. and um, Declan Rice. Yeah, so there's a good selection yeah. of them there. And then the Championship. Now you played in between the two divisions. Now I think the Championship, from the outside looking in, looks is stronger now than it was. Well, look at the Premier League this year. The the three teams that got promoted last season, they're always favourites to go straight back down. Yeah, they could all stay up. Yeah, this definitely, year. and I think since Shane Duffy's been in the Premier League, he's he's, he's gone up a level. Yeah. I think um, the first game against Denmark, he was phenomenal. Just don't pass back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't he put that on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, uh, 
Like and our midfield, like we've we've got a good core, good midfield yeah. this time. It's just unfortunate James McCarthy obviously uh, yeah. the leg break, but well enough to shame us at his as well. Didn't yeah, he? well it's good that they're so close because yeah. like, yeah, they'll they'll keep each other company and stuff like that, which is really nice. Um, but just in terms like we do have a good core centre midfielders, and I just think maybe Jeff if Hendrick, he, Harry, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if he sticks with that three, maybe five two on the wing backs, I just think you know he could he could he could get something out between the good core centre back. Good core midfielders, mm. and then if you can have two up top and the, and the wing backs, I just I just don't think James. I think James McLean would suffer um, if they play that formation. He's not a wing back, mm-hmm. but I definitely think as a winger for for Ireland, he does go up that that level. Yeah. Now, fingers crossed. I mean, what, what the draw for um, Euro twenty twenty is in Dublin, isn't it? In December, I think. I'm not sure. I think it's in December in in uh, in Dublin. So look, fingers crossed cause it, because getting to the tournaments is what it's all about, really. Yeah. Um, and even in the last one, was it? Like, well, I, I was there covering the games and, and played really well yeah. in, in those games as well. And so. you forget that, like, it, it, actually, if, if Robbie Brady played in that wing left position as well, yeah. I mean, he's ready made for that position. I know he's injured at the minute. I was going to say he's another one that's injured, yeah. But um, I'm looking, I, I believe that we're not on the decline. I don't know about you, but like people people be, always say it to me when I cover it. I think, as I said to you, I think there's a lot of talented players in the squad. That, you know, it's um, it's about trying to get the ones, the younger ones now, forcing their way up, isn't it? You know, like when when I was there, and, and you had Robbie and Duffer all coming up, Richard Dunn, yeah. all coming through together. We need that that to filter into the into the squad as well, and try and find something. Well, there is there is that rise now with the Preston lads now as yeah. well coming in, so maybe they they might bring something to the squad. You know, um, it's just unfortunate that Shane Allen doesn't score because he does everything else. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan. Shane, you know, his um, his work rate, he's he's absolutely second to none, and his desire and, and commitment to the cause, um, and, and he scored some really good goals and important ones. Important ones. I remember one one stands out. He, he kind of went in off his leg or something against Poland. Yeah. Um, I think that was for the for the Euros. It got us, it got us to the uh, yeah. playoff against Bosnia. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just like you say, he's um, sometimes sometimes he almost has too much time, doesn't he? Shay? When he's yeah, got too much time I think to think about it, he's one of those one of those strikers. I always think, but I've the got Germany a lot, goal. a lot of time for him though. Yeah, the Germany goal then as well. Yeah. He, he, he was just in boom. <laughs> that cool. was it. Exactly. And what a game that was like for for Ireland. I know yeah. it wasn't the most um, exotic of, of football, but I mean, if it's effective and it's winning the games, who cares? Exactly. That's that's my exactly. Mind. So look, fingers crossed that that. Um, the next campaign is a good one, and we can get to the major tournament again. Yeah, absolutely, well, Matt. Thanks very much for coming. Pleasure. So, uh, absolutely absolutely pleasure. loved it. Hey, uh, guys, uh, don't forget to uh, like this video and um, subscribe as always. If you haven't, uh, trying to reach that 2K now. Uh, we're just over a year in existence. Uh, I think it was two days ago, and this has been a year special now. Very special thanks to Matt for coming on. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching Irish Football Fan TV.